Olin, thank you for the time. Your response to George mm-hmm. McCaskey. I just I'm not, I'm not surprised, guys. Honestly, I'm not surprised. I think what George was trying to tell you there uh, at that, that point of the press conference was that he doesn't like me. All right, George McCaskey, I guess he doesn't like. Uh, And I know I've had some run-ins with George, to be honest, in the building uh, when he was in charge of the ticket office. I remember he had, there's a young linebacker, I won't mention his name, but I had his shirt off at the ticket office window and George started yelling at him and uh, me and George started yelling at each other. So, uh, you know, I I understand that George doesn't like me. He's telling you that he doesn't like me as a person and he doesn't think I'm a good person and he thinks I'm a liar, I guess, right? He doesn't talk to me uh, since I left the building in 2010 or 11 uh, played 190 games for that team, uh, was their team captain for eight or nine years, uh, won four or five Piccolo Awards while in the building. So uh, he called me a liar, and, and that's fine. You know, I immediately, because now I'm thinking to myself, man, maybe I got the story wrong. So I call Harry Heastan, and he confirms the story uh, to me, and I called Ryan Pace, and I talked to Ryan Pace about it because that's what guys do, right? Uh, guys who are leaders, guys who are in charge, guys who are worried about their character, they call people and actually talked to him and what George McCaskey should have said right there because maybe the story didn't get to him. What he should have said is maybe I need to talk to Harry and Ryan about what happened with Olin. Maybe this was a misunderstanding. Uh, if, if he had any respect for me, he would say that. I have respect for them and the organization. So what I actually do is I actually call people who are a part of the story instead of calling somebody who spent that long in your building who played through injuries for you, who spent that much time trying to win football games for you, who now is a father of six, who coaches kids in football, who does, does all these things, who now is 44 years old, who now have, you haven't seen in 11 years, instead of calling the guy a liar and everything I say you take with a grain of salt. If that man would have said that to my face, we would have had a problem. All in – it, it is an attack on your character and your credibility, and you felt it that way. So you called the people involved, including Ryan Pace, made sure that the story is right, and are able to stand here with your head held high in this conversation. All George had to say was... I don't know all the details of that conversation, Mm -hmm. and so I'll leave that for... I mean, why would he go out of his way to question your credibility when, as you've clearly stated, the story is true and George doesn't know it? Yeah, he's questioning the credibility. Now, if I take myself out of this and I become the analyst, right? The last time I played on a football field for the Chicago Bears for George McCaskey's football team, I tore the Liz, Liz Frank ligament in my foot. In the, in the third quarter of that game, I told the Mike Tice on the sideline that I thought my foot was broken. He said, Olin, can you finish the game for us? I said, yeah, I'll finish the game knowing I was going to become a free agent, knowing that I was in my 13th year in the NFL. So I played through a torn ligament in my foot. Now, George would tell you this story you got to take with a grain of salt because we all know Olin's a liar, right? That's what George would tell you about this story I am telling you right now. But I flew to Indianapolis, went to see their foot doctor, had him put the he had put a boot on me for five or six months. So I can prove these stories just like I can prove the story by talking to Harry Heastan that I told about the fifteen dollars an hour. Ryan Pace told me obviously first time I talked to Ryan Pace about the story. He told me a little different version. Obviously there's two sides to every story, but he said the offer was made, but it was a standard offer that they would make to people that would go to camp. It's all George had to do is to look at the story a little bit and just say, man, uh, there's our side and there's Olin's side and there's a misunderstanding here somewhere and maybe we'll talk to Olin about it one day since the people in that building do have my number. But instead he went out there and said that about me. Let me tell you something right now. I, I see it this way. If a guy like George McCaskey doesn't like me, that is a win for me. Olin, last week I asked you if, how you could not hate the Bears when they insult you in that way uh, with the offer. Now that they've insulted your character and called you a liar publicly, how do you feel about them? Uh, I don't want to put them. I don't want to put everybody in the same boat there, right? Um, Obviously, I am not fond of George McCaskey right now and the way he handled himself there. But, um, you know, the guy just said that he is not a football guy, that he is a fan. He doesn't evaluate talent, but everybody's going to report to him. You guys just listened to that press conference, right? You just heard everything that was said. Uh, I am on the radio. I am on TV. I have 13 years in that building. I, I have a lot of stories that in, that I saw when I was there. I'm sure some of that bugs them. I think we just heard that come out. He talked about they will not talk to players 
on TV about what's going on in their building because some kind of nonsense that they don't want to put us in a bad spot. Uh, you're the ones in a bad spot. Uh, I, I, what, what just happened, I don't understand. But you don't ever want to feel like, man, I hate these guys that I, you spent so many years playing football for that gave me a lot of fair contracts. I was the highest paid to center in the league for a lot of years, which means the Chicago Bears were paying me a lot of money to play football for their team uh, in this city. And so the McCaskey family, they were the owners. I know Jerry Angelo gave me the contract, but they were their owners. Ted Phillips was approving those deals that they gave me. So I don't want to say I hate them. I will say that if I saw George McCaskey right now, we would have probably a few passionate conversations. What would you say to him? Well, I, I would first ask him, how in the hell can you say something like that about somebody when you're the leader of your organization? How can you say that and not look into the story? Is the first thing I would ask him because that's nonsense to me. And then I would tell him that is an example of why you don't win in your building because of the way you just handled that. Right. Obviously, there's no, uh, you know, there's no George McCaskey. He's an older man. I'm an older man. Uh, there's no physical contact there. But there should be. He should have to explain himself uh, how you're going to say everything. I everything you hear from Olden, we all know you take a grain of salt. I'm sorry. We all don't know that, George. I'm sorry. Me and you have only had two or three conversations in our whole lives together. Right. I'm sorry that you have never called me after I left the building. After I retired, you have never called me. I have never seen you. We have never talked. You have never asked me how my kids and my family is doing, how I'm doing. How's your body feeling, Olin, after playing all those years of football for us? How's your body feeling after all of that? But, of course, you don't consider that. You just go out there and consider I will assassinate this man's character when I am the chairman of the board of the Chicago Bears. You know, uh, Olin Krutz, football players often are unafraid to have the kind of conversations you're talking about. It seems like George McCaskey and, frankly, just about everybody else who's been in that building, including Ryan Pace, are afraid of the conflict, are afraid of the direct conversation, difficult truths to each other. That's why George didn't call you. He didn't chase down this story. How much does that attitude of being afraid of those real conversations get in the way of building a winning football organization? Yeah, I mean, until they prove us wrong, you'd have to say a lot, right? It gets in the way of a lot. It gets in the way of uh, we always got to call somebody from the outside to come in and help us find a general manager. We always have to call someone like er Ernie Acorsi or Bill Polin, who, man, I mean, Bill Polin, you can't find someone better, really, uh, to help you as long as you'll be in the building every day, as long as he'll help you. But then eventually as you get into the season, uh, who is there? Uh, now that the coach is coming to Jordan McCaskey, who just told you, I am a fan of football. I am not a talent evaluator. I don't tell, uh, uh, you know, coach, someone like Matt Nagy that maybe Tevin Jenkins should be playing left tackle this week. You just heard all of that. Basically what they told you in the whole press conference is nothing has changed at all up here. We're going to do things the exact same way. So uh, the only time they're comfortable is when people ask questions about Arlington Heights. That's when they were comfortable a answering the questions. But uh, obviously, uh, the way they handle things, uh, the fact that they don't understand football, the fact that they don't know the questions to ask about football, obviously that's a problem and it will continue to be a problem. Olin, how did the conversation with Ryan Pace go? It went good, man. I mean, uh, Ryan is a great guy. He's a great guy, uh, uh, you know, Whatever it is, I'll keep it under wraps, everything we talked about. But I know Ryan from uh, when I went to New Orleans and he picked me up from the airport as a, the head of uh, pro personnel there, uh, you know, brought me to the building. So I've known him that long. There's a ton of respect uh, between the two of us. And um, there's a ton of understanding. And, then, you know, just a lot of straight shooting and talking of what happened, what didn't happen, what was said and what didn't, what wasn't said, uh, what there wasn't between two guys who love football, who respect the game, who respect the general manager, who's you know he's working his butt off to do his job, who respects a football player that knows that he worked his butt off to play this game. Uh, there wasn't anybody calling anybody a liar or you take everything he says with a grain of salt. In terms of what the Bears do now, I mean, obviously you addressed how he called you a liar and you think that it's much more of the same and we feel the same way, right? You could sub out uh, Ernie Acorsi's name and sub in Bill Polian. Bill Polian obviously has impeccable credentials did you and ryan did you get any sense of like reasons that he was given or where you think this goes from here after today no i, I didn't obviously get into that i just wanted to ask uh make sure that you know that i wasn't 
telling a lie, obviously on the radio, on TV, like you guys know, right. um, I, you know, I, I take a lot of pride in, in telling the story as I see it. You know, when I, when I talk about the football team, I talk about exactly what I see on film, right? When I, when I talk about the building, I talk about exactly what I saw when I was in the building. So I take a lot of pride in the stories that I tell that they are true. So the fans can get a look at why their team is winning or losing or playing well or not playing well. So uh, I just wanted to ask that very simple question. Uh, and he explained the, the, the franchise side to me and, and I got Harry's side. And now I know I am fine. Obviously George, didn't see the need to do that kind of research. And right? the he franchise's the side is basically, it was just a generic coaching internship offer. Like it was like bo- boilerplate and they just put your name in there. Is yeah. that their side? Just a misunderstanding of uh, what, what, what actually was going to be happening in the building, what the job was going to be. Like I said, it was going to be a, like a, you know, a outside contractor job. And it was just an offer that was made so you could come to camp and work camp. Just to work camp. Yeah. But okay. I, 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 I... So, so there was never an exchange then. Did did Ryan intimate today that they might have worked something out with you to actually make it well, more we, representative? Like I, I, did, I didn't. I didn't want to get in. There was no need to get into all of that. Right? Okay. Just the need was for me was to know that there was an actual offer made. Yeah, okay. Right. And he said, he said, look, I didn't. George never heard about it, so George didn't know about it. But instead of asking people and finding a story out just go ahead and call me a liar is is fine with the guy who is the head, the chairman of the Bears organization. And the other thing, Olin, that I wanted to ask you about anyway before he called you a liar was the thing that you alluded to about, you know, putting you guys in a tough spot in media. So, okay, fine. Let's just take that on its face, even though I think it's ridiculous. So, so, okay, fine. He's not going to talk to Pat Manley. He's not going to talk to Olin Krutz. He's not going to talk to ex-Bears with a media presence. We've had Gary Fensick on, who is probably the most successful ex-Bears player in terms of business and corporate strategy in the history of the organization. And Fensick has said many times that they've never come to him for counsel on anything football related. So what did you make of that answer beyond just not coming to yourself because of your radio and TV platform? Yeah, I I just, obviously I didn't understand a lot of the answers that were given uh, today, right? I didn't understand, and that 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 one made no sense. There's a lot of former players who don't do TV, who don't do radio in town, uh, that they haven't reached out and talked to, and you know they always give you the stuff that, well, everybody is welcome to come in here and talk and and what, whatever it may be, but um, it just doesn't really. I don't really understand, you know, like you're saying, there's fencing, there's other guys, and that answer just didn't make any sense. They're just telling you. Like he was telling you with me, I don't like Olin. Uh, they're telling you they don't want to get opinions from former players. They don't think we can help them. Right. Yeah, they, they don't. They don't want to hear that they're doing it wrong from anybody that they actually respect. It's crazy, uh, Olin. What does optimism look like today? How do they get it right from here on out? Do they just they just hope to get lucky? Do we have to just hope they get lucky and pick the right GM who then picks the right head coach? How does this turn out? Well. Well, optimism is that Bill Polian is helping them, and I, and I think that guy has a ton of respect in the NFL. He's a smart, no-nonsense uh, football guy. Uh, he, he does have a lot of football knowledge. He does have a lot of contacts, as they talked about today. So uh, he is uh, their ace in the hole through this process. You, you hope that he is in the building, that he does know exactly what this building needs as far as everything they have to put in that building as far as a strength coach, a nutritionist, uh, someone to help the team, uh, to create the culture, to create the standard that we have been talking about a lot on the radio. So I think if there's one positive here uh, for the Bears fans to look at, it's the fact that Bill Poland, a well-respected football man, a no-nonsense kind of guy, is a part of the process, and he will uh, tell them the truth. And, he, and Bill Poland is the kind of guy who will tell you stuff that you don't want to hear. Olin, I think he owes you a phone call, but you picked up the phone and called He Stand. You picked up the phone and called Pace. Any chance you're picking up the phone and calling George? No, I, I won't call them uh, uh, there. They made it very clear to me what they feel about me. I don't feel that way about them. Uh, there's no need to talk to them about anything. When, when someone says that about you, I don't think there's anything else to hash out, right? I mean, he lets you know uh, immediately that he, when someone basically calls you a liar uh, on a live Zoom call, there's really nothing to hash out anymore, right? Yeah, no, I I would agree. I would agree. I was just curious. Mm-hmm. Just, just no, cu- yeah, I, I'm. I, I don't. Uh, I don't see myself calling them 
uh, to talk to him about about anything, really. You need to be okay. the bigger man. They need you to be the bigger man because they apparently don't do that. Such a disappointment. No. Yeah, that was something else, man. It really was. Olin, thank you for making time for us today, and uh, I hope that no one looks at you wrong for the rest of the day. <laughs> I'd be a little worried worry about, about that, man. I told you I'm retired. I'm retired. I know, but everyone, you keep telling me that you're retired, but everyone who uh -huh. I talk to that knows you says that you have one more fight uh -huh. left in you. So I don't know who to believe. <laughs> yeah, I better save it though, right? When you only got one left <laughs> and you got four daughters, you better save that one fight. There you go. <laughs> Olin, we'll talk soon, man. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Man. You know, I've called... Um, front offices like that and like the bulls used to be a back padding society you know yeah in this case the bears and the family and the board everybody just supports each other says nice things to each other they don't want a voice they don't want a voice who's going to disagree with them tell them difficult truths certainly don't want to bother chasing down a conversation with a former player picking a fight with olin Krutz. interesting a choice bold strategy cotton we'll see how it works out for him